If you're anything like me, you've been drinking quite a few quarantinis stuck inside social distancing because of the coronavirus. Well, according to the World Health Organization, ethanol, the type of drinking alcohol that's found in vodka, can also be used at a way higher concentration for hand sanitizer. And during this crisis, some liquor companies have made the pivot to making hand sanitizer. And I was curious how this worked. So I've decided to reach out to Airco, the company that has already made the pivot from liquor to thousands of bottles of sanitizer. They view themselves as a technology company, making products that are sustainable and carbon negative. I'm Lucy Biggers, and this is One Small Step. I got to interview Airco's CEO and co-founder, Greg Constantine, about how the company pivoted so quickly from making vodka to hand sanitizer, and how their process is carbon negative. How did you guys change your production when you realized the coronavirus was hitting New York? About a month ago, we really saw this pandemic getting progressively worse, not only in the US, but globally. We, we, we made a conscious decision internally in our business that, hey, do we have the ability to switch our production method to actually make it? One, yes. Two, is this something that we want to do and we have the ability to do? And because we have the ability to do it, uh, it, was a, it was almost a no-brainer decision to actually go out and do it because we knew it was going to get progressively worse. It eventually did. And any small part that we can kind of help uh, along this road, especially in New York, given that we are a New York business, made just made sense for us to do and, 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 and here we are. So yeah, it was a pretty seamless transition. And who are you giving your hand sanitizer to? Trying to work with those that are really at the front lines and that really you know need it most as well. Because again, unfortunately, we're, we're unable to create infinite amounts of this stuff. So trying to be sparring with it is, is a big piece of the puzzle. And what extra like ingredients do you need to do hand sanitizer versus a vodka? They're different. So, uh, you know, hand sanitizer, you, you know, as per the guidelines, there's some other ingredients that you need, like, you know, glycerol as well and hydrogen peroxide as well, which is another, you know, small and they're inactive ingredients. The only active ingredient is really ethanol um, that you put in there. Um, for vodka, on the other hand, you know, ethanol makes up about 40% of the bottle, right? And, and the rest is mostly water. So what is Airco? We're a technology company based here in, in New York City, in the heartland, and we have technology to make uh, the highest quality uh, consumer products from, from carbon dioxide. Um, and our first product was a, was a vodka product. We're now making a little bit of hand sanitizer as well. You're making products from carbon dioxide, which I work in climate change and cover sustainability. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what? What is this? Can you explain how this technology works? We take CO2, we take carbon dioxide, and that carbon dioxide is actually captured off of traditional traditional alcohol production methods. So when you traditionally make, you know, over the fermentation process, you know, there's a lot of emissions that come with that. So we take the CO2 that comes off the back of that before it's emitted into the atmosphere and uh, it's delivered to us. And we use that CO2 in our uh, in our warehouse here, here in Brooklyn. Um, and we convert the CO2 combined with hydrogen and the reaction that's caused creates creates ethanol. Uh, and we take that that ethanol, which is a type of alcohol, and we, we apply it to, to various consumer products. That sounds super complicated. So just to reiterate their process, Airco takes carbon dioxide from a nearby factory. Then using electricity, they separate water into hydrogen and oxygen. Then they combine the carbon dioxide and the hydrogen to make ethanol. And then they use that ethanol in their vodka. This process prevents one pound of carbon dioxide from going into the atmosphere per bottle of vodka they manufacture. What makes you guys special that you figured this out? A big difference about what separates us apart is that you know we're removing CO2 in our alcohol production process, right? When you traditionally make uh, alcohol, you're fermenting corn and grain, and, and there's an abundance of emissions that come even just from the fertilizer alone. So in our life cycle, we're actually carbon negative in that we're removing about a pound of CO2 for every bottle that we create. We're not using any land at all. Our alcohol is made just from CO2. So for every bottle of CO2 in our life cycle analysis that we're, that we're creating, we're removing about a pound of carbon dioxide for every bottle that we create. There's no other inputs other than renewable solar electricity carbon dioxide and hydrogen that we create on site as well. It can absolutely be, be used industry-wide uh, and our goal is to really you know, show people that it can be as well. Is that something that you guys enterprised yourself to come up with this idea of like creating vodka? Technologies like this have existed for, for a long, long time and we're definitely you know, standing on the shoulders of giants on other great innovators who've tried various ways to take 
things like CO2 and the rest. Um, you know, what our ability is, is in the fact that the alcohol that we create off of our process is such a high purity, like it's really, really high in purity that it's phenomenal for consumption. It's, it's, it's better for consumption than traditional methods of making alcohol. It's a really great way for us to show people that, hey, you can actually make a product that's better, that's just higher quality, period, but is also far more sustainable as well. And we have the ability to because of the nature of the product. Are you um, putting the hand sanitizer in your vodka bottles or did you get new bo bottles? We had to get new bottles. Uh, fortunately enough for us, we have phenomenal partners that just moved so quickly and that really came to the table because you know we told them, hey guys, you know we're trying to work on getting something to market really, really quick that's gonna actually help people. Uh, and we work with an amazing label manufacturer here in New York actually that, that really just helped out as soon as possible. And same thing on the bottling side of things. So yeah, we've got a, we've got a really awesome lean team here that's able to move quickly and get stuff done. So it was really great to see. So what would be one small step that people can take? So just really being being aware to what you're doing and how you're consuming things because I think now more so than ever uh, we really need to be cautious of, of what we're doing right I'm, I'm from Australia and you know this term of you know our house as, as the world is on fire my house literally was on fire Australia was on fire you know due to severe climate changes and severe climate conditions as well so just be conscious about what you're doing. Actually think about the steps that you're taking as well and really understand that we are we have been put here on this earth and, and, and that we need to look after it as well. I think it's amazing to see an innovative company like Airco pivoting their production to help during this crisis. And I think it's a reminder to all of us that we can use the resources that are available to us right now to help in some way, whether it's during the coronavirus pandemic or to address climate change moving forward. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's all for this episode. If you liked it, please share it. Cheers. <sighs> Nothing like the refreshing taste of ice cold water in a martini glass. <laughs>